What's up, everybody? It's your favorite moment you've been waiting for, his favorite nerd, and today we are going to do my top and bottom lists for Transformer releases this year. A couple things we gotta get out of the way. One, I can only include figures that I've actually looked at. I'm sure people will say, but what about Earthrise Prime or this or that? Maybe great. I wouldn't know. I haven't looked at it. I'm only including the figures that I've looked at, of which there have been many in the Transformers department, and today we are going to go through them. Second thing is, every time I do this, Somebody undoubtedly gets their feelings hurt that their favorite choice ended up on a list they didn't want it to or not on the list at all. All I can say is, this is my opinion. This is how I see this stuff. And the good news is, if you like something and you bought it, you win. And I think with that, we can start the list. And we'll start with the top five most disappointing figures. Just to clarify, this specifically means figures that were disappointing. Not that they were inherently bad or terrible or don't deserve a purchase or don't deserve some credit just that they were disappointing and we'll start with number five and that's Takara Tomy's Masterpiece Tigatron. I have a number of issues regarding Takara Masterpiece. I haven't been quiet about it. In fact, I've been quite vocal. I have issues with their business. I have issues with their character choices. I have issues with their aesthetic choices. I have issues with their price points. But one thing I rarely have issue with with Takara is their quality of materials and quality of build and fit and finish as my buddy T2RX6 would say. However, this one had all of those problems. There were build issues, tolerance issues, flap issues, joint issues that normally under any most third party company, I wouldn't think twice about. But because it was Takara who normally do not have these issues, but have had increasingly more this year, I was extremely disappointed in the quality of build. And that's why he makes the list at number five. Numero Quattro, Unique Toys Dragoon. I know people love this figure. Let me once again reiterate, this doesn't mean it's a bad figure, it means it's a disappointing figure to me. Let me explain why. Coming off of the heels of Unique Toys Challenger and Unique Toys Lockdown, which did incredible engineering that was somehow fun and intuitive, with wonderful sculpt and paint, this one somehow felt less than. This one somehow felt that after they got the upper body worked out, they somehow took the easy way out for the lower body, and as a result left me very unsatisfied. You know me, I don't care much for the movie stuff. It means very little to me. However, I believe Unique Toys Challenger was in the running for figure of the year not too long ago, and the lockdown I'm pretty sure won best transformation one year. I do hold their movie figures to a certain standard. I think they are the best movie figures on the market. This one was just disappointing in comparison to its previous two releases. In many ways, Unique Toys became its own worst enemy for me. The sculpt didn't look as clearly defined and purposeful the paint didn't look as interesting, and the transformation started off strong but ended up frustrating. Number three, Fans Toys Hunk. You guys know I'm a fan of Fans Toys. I'm a Defender, card-carrying member. But Fans Toys has had a very prolific year with a number of releases. And the more you release, oftentimes, the more things start slipping through the cracks. I think this figure is somewhat the embodiment of it. With transformation frustrations regarding getting the box in place at the end of the truck steps, less metallic paint and more dull matte paint, colors that don't quite match all the time, limited articulation, while the sculpt, build, and materials are still definitely there, and this is far better than most third-party figures I've looked at this year. It's still disappointing for me in regard to how and where I hold fans' toys in the echelon of third-party Transformer companies and first-party Transformer companies. This one felt like they were going through the motions instead of paying homage to the character. Number two, MMC's Bruticus. Once again, not that it's inherently bad, just disappointing. Let me explain why. When they decided to go this route, I had a number of concerns. Those concerns mainly included proportions. They also included scaling. So I was expecting for the proportions to be wonky, but they weren't. They weren't because they made the proportions of Onslaught and Bot Mode wonky, and it paid out for the combined mode of Bruticus. So they kind of fixed that issue. I had concerns about the scaling. That still was a miss, but it wasn't expectation. I knew that they would didn't quite be in line with the rest of the third party masterpiece scale combiners. I knew it. So there was nothing to disappoint me there. One thing that did disappoint me was that this figure was super shaky and unstable. And I'm sure I'll hear in the comments how yours was perfect. And that's cool, bro. But I'm telling you, the one that I looked at was experiencing a very bad day of Parkinson's. Extremely unstable, which is not something that I expect from MMC. And I've also heard that you can upgrade it and buy the shoes and all that kind of special stuff for it in order to get it to 
work properly and that's fine but that inherently undoes what they were trying to do which was a self-contained combiner and if they're going to undo that then they might as well undo a lot of it that causes issues along the way therefore while I expected this to be a little shorter and I expected the proportions to be weird which they weren't I didn't expect for it to have as much stability issues as it did this is a flashback to the TFC era of combiners and it left me disappointed and coming in at numero uno the Transformers red line now you guys know I was excited for this line I was excited because they have set a precedent with their action figures Hasbro is undoubtedly making the best domestic action figure on the market between Black Series G.I. Joe classified and even some of their Marvel Legends they are towing the line and setting a standard so I had nothing but high hopes for this Transformers red line but as you can see after reviewing an advanced copy that I got from my buddy Calum when mine finally arrived I haven't even felt the need to take them out of the box because they were such a letdown it's not to say that they're terrible it's just to say that with the standard that they've set this was disappointing I just had my buddy Pinkerton over yesterday who said the good news is you can at least play with them in the bathtub because of the way that the plastic feels and I had to laugh because he's spot on correct and that's why it makes number one of my most disappointing Transformers of the year moving on to the surprisingly good category meaning figures that kind of the inverse of the disappointing they aren't necessarily amazing it's just that my expectations were so low that I was shocked at how much I enjoyed it or thought how good it was coming in at number five is the Revel Tech Optimus Prime this is from the amazing Yamaguchi line which I have some experience with I've looked at their Deadpool I've looked at their Psylocke I've looked at their Wolverine I've looked at their Wonder Woman and their Harley Quinn and for the most part I find that they greatly sacrifice sculpt in order to pull off articulation it's a sacrifice that they're willing to make in order to pull off extreme poses and it makes sense but sometimes leaves me wanting more and oftentimes leaves me disappointed when I heard that they were doing an Optimus Prime figure I felt oh good God how are they gonna get all those big boxes around those other big boxes and you know what they did it and they kept the sculpt super clean which is something they don't normally do they were able to pull off a highly articulated Optimus Prime with a super clean sculpt not only is this the inverse for the Yamaguchi line in my opinion but it's also the inverse from Transformers red line a surprisingly good figure Coming in at number four, the KFC Junkions. I actually debated to not get any of these, but I ended up getting two out of the four, and I'm happy I did. I didn't think they were going to do much for me because the mold is old and pretty much outdated. They're no-name characters, and I already have two. And yet, when I got them, I found that I had a lot of fun messing with them. I found that the interchangeability of between pieces, parts, and other assorted junk, if you will, worked really well for me. Had a great time reviewing them. Had a great time displaying them. Think they look fantastic together, and as a a result they make the list at number four for most surprisingly good in spite of all the recent trailer drama and business shenanigans, I had a whole lot of concerns regarding X-Transbot's Motormaster. I find that X-Transbot usually does a better job with smaller figures, but the bigger the figure gets, the more unreliable they tend to be. But this figure, with the exception of that waste issue, which was widespread, but I didn't personally have any issues with, aside from that, which I can't even speak on, I really enjoyed this figure, and I think it looks great. It's painted beautifully, it's sculpted beautifully, the hardware is right where you want it, so to speak, and it just blew my mind only due to how low my expectations were for it. A really well done piece in spite of all the drama that kind of surrounds it now. Coming in at number two, Magic Square's Tape Team. Now, I've liked Magic Square products in the past. However, their gummy plastic does tend to get on my nerves a bit, especially the more I look at them. Add on top of that the fact that these are little itty-bitty tapes for little itty-bitty legends, and I thought they'd be cheesy and disposable for the most part, and was much more looking forward to what New Age had to offer in comparison. However, these tapes blow the New Age ones out of the water, specifically their Rumble and Frenzy, which look like little miniature versions of the MMC offerings, which is to say the least least impressive. In fact, on any given day, I might argue with someone that they're better than the Takara Masterpiece offerings on a technical level. The Laser Beak and Ravage are great as well, don't get me wrong. There was something about the Rumble figure in particular that I found shockingly satisfying. And coming in at number one for most surprisingly good is the Zeta B. I like Zeta products. I think their combiners are still, as of right now, the best we've ever seen from a third party offering. However, their combiners are one of those circumstances where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. So as they began to release independent offerings, I didn't have high hopes to say the least. They tend to be lightweight plastic and fairly brittle, with decent enough sculpts. When I got this, this felt like a professional piece. This felt like a first party piece. Now, 
it did break on me. But what doesn't break on me? Am I right? But in all seriousness, with the exception of that break, I was just amazed at how well it was painted, the quality of materials, and how good the sculpt was. The general level of quality was superior than anything they've ever done in the past. And that's why they deserve the number one spot. Moving on to worst figures of the year, this is almost the exact mirror image of what we just looked at. This is the Transform Element B. Now, I personally don't own any Transform Element products. However, I'm looking forward to owning one, meaning when they create one that I actually want, because generally, I think they make a good product. I think they make well-painted, well-sculpted, well-built pieces, except for this B, which had clearance issues, build issues, and pin issues. Pins were falling out on me during the transformation process, which was a nightmare by the way. It was a well sculpted piece and fairly well painted but the fact that the build was just so iffy especially in comparison to their prime which I think was far more complicated but extremely well built and basically what you have here is the mirror image of the Zeta where I didn't expect much and got a ton. Transform element I expected a lot and got trash. Well sculpted pretty trash but when you get beyond the first layer just wasn't what it was supposed to be. Coming in at number four, MMC's Blast Off. I don't know why fate won't just let me have a decent masterpiece scale Blast Off, but it is not interested in letting me have a one iota. And as a result, this is what I got, which is messy in terms of its sculpt, limited in terms of its paint, with wonky proportions, and a calf rocker. If you recall from the video, the calf rocker pretty much made me lose my mind. I started laughing, and I wasn't ever sure that I would stop laughing again. It was just absurd. I think most of the figures of these five are really good independently. Of course, one of the ones that I need, I would not put in that category. Number three, Toy World Beast Wars Megatron. If you've dealt with this at all, you would know it is a complete disaster. It is a nightmare. It's a weird color palette. It's a weird material use. The joints don't hold up. It's not sculpted incredibly well. The engineering isn't incredibly well done. It's not painted very well. It's just a mess from pretty much top to bottom. It has a couple of cool little features, creatures features, if you will, along the way, but nothing really spectacular about it and nothing to offset, no Migos, all of the things that are wrong with it, which are plentiful. Number two, Magic Square Seekers. I mostly like Magic Square. However, their materials get in the way of their engineering a lot of the time. No time perhaps as more prevalent as in this release, which is just extremely frustrating to deal with because of the tolerances and how the tolerances have to hold up in relation to that cheap plastic they use. If you want to use the cheap plastic and offer fairly well produced products at a reasonable price at a legend scale with transformations that are simple in order to allow the cheaper plastic to hold together, I'm all for it because I think it makes a little bit of sense. However, when it doesn't and when it becomes frustrating, then the cheaper plastic becomes even a bigger issue. And now I have to throw the baby out with the bath water and this baby's name is Magic Square. And my personal opinion regarding the worst figure of the year is Fans Hobby Athena. Fans Hobby products generally aren't for me. But that being said, I do enjoy a number of things about them. I think that they're well sculpted. I think that they're well engineered. I think that their materials feel great. I think that they're extremely well built. This, well sculpted maybe. The materials felt like bathtub toys. The build was weak and flimsy. There was no hardware, of merit anyway. The engineering seemed amateurish in comparison to what they normally do. And the hype surrounding surrounding it was big. And as a result, when this delivered, it almost felt like it was made by a different company. It didn't feel up to the standard in any way that Fans Hobby has set. This for me is the biggest swing and miss of the year and subsequently the worst figure of the year overall. And now let's end on a high note. Best figures of the year. Coming in at number five is the Studio Cell Unicron. Now this is on the list for me because its size and sculpt is exactly what a lot of people wanted. The materials feel good and the build is decent. It's sitting so low on the top five because of the brittle pieces that broke off and some instruction mishaps and errors that make the overall piece far more complicated and potentially fragile than it should be. But this is an impressive, very cartoon accurate, well well-built, well-made, well-sculpted, and well-painted version of this character that many people have wanted for an awfully long time. It's a huge undertaking, a risky undertaking. It may have ruined third party as a discussion for another day, but it was ballsy, it was bold, and it delivered, and it earns its spot at least at number five.
Coming in at number four is the Mastermind Creations reformatted tie between Moors and Tordor. The two large characters of the DJD, which we feel like we've been waiting an eternity for. With a lot of hype surrounding it and a lot of need, with also ample amount of anticipation given the amount of time it took, MMC delivered what MMC delivers when they deliver it best. A well-sculpted, decently painted, well-built, with good materials, and a transformation that's somewhat fun and enjoyable at least. These two big bots would have been easy to botch and they didn't they delivered. Number three, the New Age Coneheads. Once again, a mirror image to the Magic Square. For a Legends class figure, beautifully sculpted, beautifully painted, with an interesting, complex, intricate, but fun and enjoyable transformation, along with accessories to boot, including pieces to a diorama that only enriches your display opportunities, this set is probably the biggest home run Legends set that I've seen all year, and there's been a lot of great Legends all year. But when something stands above, when it's competing like sharks for the chunk in the water you have to take notice and you have to give it its just due and this is where i sit this set Coming in at number two, Flames Toys Optimus Prime. Look, it's gonna be rare that Flames Toys put something out and it doesn't end up on the top five, and this one was pretty magnificent. It's not my favorite sculpt of choice, but that's a subjective thing. Objectively, the build, paint, sculpt, quality, accessories, bang for your buck, gimmicks, and light up features. Flames Toys is like Mike Tyson on a speed bag. They're dangerous. They're dangerous when they get it right, which they often do, and this one is no exception. An absolutely beautiful piece that tends to stand out in anybody's collection, which which, for the good news of Flames Toys fans, is pretty much par for the course given the company. An absolutely stellar release. And numero uno. For years, most of us have wanted an Astro Train that could sit and fill in the ranks of our Decepticons on our Masterpiece shelf, and we felt challenged to get one that was done right. In spite of what people will tell you in the comments due to BBTS sales, the Toy World one does not hold up. And while the DX9 did a good job for a period of time, it quickly began to show its age, and certainly doesn't fit in with the modern Masterpiece aesthetic in any way, shape, or form. Which is not a knock to the quality of that figure, by the way. But after years of waiting, years of hoping, a lot of fingers crossed, bent knees, and prayers, at the end of the night, we finally got a masterpiece scaled Astro Train that fit all of the criteria that we were looking for, for the most part, in an offering. And it too is a controversial piece in the echelon of third party releases right up there with third party Unicron this year. And I hope it wasn't worth the big price, but at the very least, it was extremely satisfying if it was. So, wrapping it up, it was an interesting year, you know, and I think it's worthwhile noting just how much stuff we did get, you know, in a very complicated, unprecedented, I hear is the, the kind of hot button word they use to describe the year. Once again, if I offended you, I'm sorry, it wasn't my intention. Just my opinions on all the stuff that I've looked at, and I hope I've given enough reason for you to understand my choices. I think that the effects of Unicron and Astrotrain are going to be far-reaching. However, I'm very curious to see what next year looks like, and cautiously optimistic at the same time. I'll be back tomorrow with my top five and bottom five of just purchases I've made. I felt the need to do that because this list and yesterday's list both had a lot of figures that I just had the opportunity to take a look at. Whereas, you know, when you got your own skin in the game, it is a bit different. You had to be perhaps even more critical and sometimes perhaps even more forgiving. But I figured it was worthwhile making one more. So tomorrow will be my overall purchases, top five, bottom five. And then I think I'm going to do something similar for Star Wars, but it'll be a bit different. Something new and fresh, less like this, less structured like this. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't don't kill me in the comments. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.